Wilfred Woodruff was the first man to ascend Ensign Peak on July the 26th of 1847. Brigham Young was the last man up. He was still feeling the effects of his illness as they entered the valley. Ensign Peak was also used as a watchtower. Smoke signals by day, bonfires by night signaled the movements of the American army that arrived during the Utah War of 1859-1860. They were able to monitor those movements and signal each other as far south as Utah Valley. The Ensign Peak marker sits immediately west of the Utah State Capitol and it reads as follows. From this point, looking northward, one has a clear view of Ensign Peak, a round hill projecting up from the low range of which it is a part. On July 26, 1847, two days after the Mormon pioneers entered this valley, Brigham Young and party climbed to that point and with the aid of field glasses made a careful survey of the mountains, canyons, and streams. In addition to Brigham Young, the party included Heber C. Kimball, Wilford Woodruff, George A. Smith, Ezra T. Benson, Willard Richards, Albert Carrington, and William Clayton. Wilford Woodruff was the first to ascend the peak. Brigham Young was the last due to a recent illness. It was suggested that this would be a fitting place to set up an ensign for the nations where the Lord shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, as foretold in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. It was then named Ensign Peak, and in later years, a standard was erected on its summit. Rising above the Salt Lake Valley is a dome-shaped peak. Brigham Young saw it in a vision before the saints left Nauvoo. He saw an ensign descend upon the hill and heard the voice of Joseph Smith say, build under that point and you will prosper and have peace. When Brigham Young first arrived in the valley, he immediately recognized the peak. On the morning of July 26, 1847, the men who would eventually comprise the new First Presidency, along with several members of the Twelve, climbed its slopes. This small group of priesthood leaders gazed out upon the valley below. This is where we will plant the soles of our feet, President Young said, and where the Lord will place His name amongst His people. As I now stand at Ensign Peak and see the valley below, I marvel at the foresight of that little group. These prophets, dressed in old, travel-worn clothes, standing in boots they had worn for more than a thousand miles, spoke of a millennial vision. It was both bold and audacious. It was almost unbelievable. Here they were, almost a thousand miles, from the nearest settlement to the east and almost 800 miles from the Pacific coast. They were in an untried climate. They had never raised a crop here. They had not built a structure of any kind. They were exiles, driven from their fair city on the Mississippi into this desert region of the west. But they were possessed of a vision drawn from the scriptures and words of revelation and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. For more information on Hallowed Ground Sacred Journeys, please visit virtualtours.byu.edu.